Home is home. And people have connections to their places of birth and their places of childhood for so many different reasons. And sometimes others can't even understand it. It's the food, it's the memories, it's everything about it. And SubhanAllah, that's for people who still can connect to their homeland. But when it comes to refugees, people that are violently forced out of their homes and are not able to return, that connection to home is deep. And that's why Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala even likens people being forced out of their homes to death. It's the same thing as death for some people. Now, for the Prophet Sallallahu and some of those companions in Mecca, all they knew was Mecca. The Prophet Sallallahu only left Mecca twice on a trade route. And for them to be forced out this way was very difficult upon them. And Rasulullah Sallallahu would not only connect to Mecca in a deep way, but he empathized with those who were in a similar situation, both those who were forced out of Mecca, as well as those who would be made refugees until the very time that we live in now. Mecca is not a place that has any particular beautiful beaches or oceans or any particular greenery. And most people who have seen Medina and Mecca in terms of just the nature of it would say Medina is far more beautiful than Mecca, but it was still home to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's all that he knew. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam now knows how special and blessed this place is. And so there's this heartbreaking moment where you see that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam literally rises from a cave as he is in the beginning of his hijrah. And he looks back at Mecca and he talks to it for the last time before being run out of it. And he says to Mecca these famous words, مَا أَطْيَبَكِ مِنْ بَلَدٍ وَأَحَبَّكِ إِلَيَّ How beautiful, how pure and blessed of a place are you? And beloved to me, and in one narration, the Prophet ﷺ says, Beloved to Allah, وَلَوْلَا أَنَّ قَوْمِ أَخْرَجُونِي مِنْكِ مَا سَكَنْتُ غَيْرَكِ And had your people not run me out, I would have never lived in another place. And so the Prophet ﷺ is basically saying to Mecca, I would never leave you had your people not driven me out. And there was something about even the way the Qur'an was revealed to console the Prophet ﷺ and console the Muslims when they first migrated to Medina. The verses in Surah Al-Baqarah, إِذْ يَرْفَعُ إِبْرَاهِيمُ الْقَوَاعِدَ مِنَ الْبَيْتِ وَإِسْمَعِيلِ When Ibrahim السلام, and Ismail السلام, are raising their hands after the construction of the Kaaba, and they're asking Allah for acceptance, and they're asking Allah that Allah honor the house with the believers who come from all over the world. So you have all of these verses about Ibrahim السلام, making dua in Mecca that were revealed to the Muslims when they first migrated to Medina as a form of comfort to them and also letting them know that one day the promise of the father Ibrahim السلام, will indeed come true. Then there's this narration from Aisha radiallahu anha, where it's like you have to balance the love that the Sahaba had for Mecca, and then obviously what would come of Medina later on, and realize we're experiencing Medina in a very specific way these days. This is a narration from Aisha radiallahu anha. She says that, I went to visit my father, Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and Bilal radiallahu ta'ala anhu, after the migration to Medina. Why? Because they had fallen extremely ill. And Aisha radiallahu anha says that Medina was known as a place where people get sick. It was something in the water, whatever it was, when people would get to Medina, they would always get sick. And so the Sahaba almost all got sick and her father Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu was sick and Bilal radiallahu ta'ala anhu was sick. And she describes the scene that they're both laid out, stretched on their backs, and they're sweating from the fevers that they have. So she says, I spoke to my father and I said, Ya Abati, kayfa tajiduk? Oh, my father, how are you? Oh, Ya Bilal, kayfa tajiduk? And oh, Bilal, how are you? So as for Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he responded in the following way. He said, He said, a man wakes up every morning amongst his family and death is closer to him than his shoelaces. Basically to say what's after Medina except for death. After this hijrah, after this migration, I doubt we're even going to make it in this place. So surely we're going to die because of this illness. As for Bilal radiallahu ta'ala, I know his poem is a lot more complicated and complex. 
and he reminisces, even though he was a slave in Mecca for so long and you know did not enjoy Mecca the way that others would enjoy Mecca, still a deep attachment to Mecca. As for Bilal, he gets up and Aisha radiallahu anha said, he would rise to his uh, to his elbows. So imagine him stretched out on his back and he comes to his elbows. He can't even sit up right all the way. And he said, Ala layta shi'ri. هل أبيتن ليلة بواد وحولي إذخر وجليل وهل أريد يوما مياه مجنة وهل يبدو لي شامة وطفيل It's a beautiful poem. And if you don't know Mecca, and surely we don't know Mecca the way that he's speaking about it, then it doesn't make much sense until you start to break it down. But he says, how would it be, oh, will I ever get a chance to spend a night again in the valley? And what's the valley? It's Mecca with Ithkhir and Jalil. And these were particular types of vegetation or grass that would grow in Mecca uh, around him. And he said, and I wonder if one day I'll get to drink once again from the water of Majanna. And I wonder if one day I'll see the mountains of Shama and Tafil. And these are two particular mountains that are on the outskirts of Mecca, which you can actually see today. Uh, they're very beautiful and they're unique in the surface. And people used to go and they used to take their animals there. So Bilal radiallahu anhu is imagining sitting on the outskirts of Mecca on Sham and Tafil, watching the people let their animals graze and enjoying that place. So Bilal radiallahu ta'ala anhu is missing Mecca to the point that he's starting to talk about the specifics. And in one narration, he then starts to curse uh, Utba and Shayba and Umayya and these people that ran us out of Mecca to this place of Medina that at that point they could not stand. So Aisha radiallahu anha says, I went back to the Prophet وسلم, and I said, Ya Rasulullah, I don't think your two companions like this place very much. So Rasulullah said, why? What happened? She said, you know, I went to them and this is what they're saying. This is the poetry that they are chanting out, out of their longing for Mecca and the hardships of Medina. So then she says, Rasulullah raised his hands. And what I'm about to share with you of the Prophet raising his hands, those of you that love Medina, may Allah make us all amongst those that love Medina, trace it back to this particular dua where the Prophet raises his hands and he says, Allahumma habib ilayna al Medina ka hubbina Mecca o ashad. Oh Allah, make Medina beloved to us as much as we love Mecca or more, or more. Wasahiha, wa barik lana fi sa'iha wa muddiha. And rectify it and bless us with its sa'a and with its mud. These are two measurements. The, the mud is when you carry two handfuls of something. And the sa'a is basically like a liter. It's four times the mud. So bless us with its weights, bless us with its fruits, its measurements, everything that comes from it. And take away this fever from us and all this illness that we are struck with. So from that day onwards, when the Prophet makes that dua for us to love Medina, know that we are still benefiting from that particular dua. And that's why if you've been to Umrah or Hajj, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala write it down for us, Allahumma ameen, you might feel a connection that's deep to Medina, one that you might not even feel when you go to Mecca. And the Prophet وسلم, brings the prayer of Ibrahim السلام, together with, with his. He says, Inna Ibrahima harrama Mecca. He said that Ibrahim السلام, sanctified Mecca and he prayed for its people. And so the Prophet وسلم, said, Ibrahim السلام, prayed for Mecca and they still experienced the blessings of that to his day until now. And he said, and I have sanctified Medina and I have prayed for it to be twice as much as what Ibrahim السلام, prayed for the people of Mecca. In another narration from Anas ta'ala anhu, the Prophet وسلم, said, Allahumma ja'al bil Madinati dhu'fay ma ja'alta bi Makkata min al baraka O oh Allah, place in Medina twice as much of the baraka of the blessings that you have placed in Mecca. And so the Prophet ﷺ prayed for us to love Medina the way we love Mecca and more. He prayed for Medina to be as blessed as Mecca and more in every single little detail. And so what that meant was, of course, just like Dajjal can't enter Mecca, for example, he cannot enter into Medina and it becomes a haram, it becomes a sanctified place. But on top of that, when you go to Medina and you realize that you are in the presence of all of these places that were in the presence of the Prophet Al-Qadi Ayyad, he said in a shifa 
know that there is not a tree in Al Madina except that the Prophet either touched it or prayed under it or received revelation under its shade. And that's why Abdullah ibn Umar anhuma, when he would walk in Medina, he would say, it might be that my footstep will fall in the footstep of the Prophet And so we love al Madina from the dua of the Prophet and we love Mecca from the dua of Ibrahim And of course, both of those places along with Jerusalem, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sanctified those places and made them beloved to the hearts of the believers for all time.